Well, I'm back on another journey. And uh, I thought I was done for a while. We did have some unfinished business we've got to wrap up. So I'm, I'm taking off from my uh, place in Traverse City where I live. And I'm heading down to Indiana. And I'm going to go see my buddy Tyler. And we are going to finally bring back the 4101 pre-war bus that I own. And uh, we did a rescue on this in October well, September, October, and November of last year, 2019, in Belpre, Ohio, and it's a it's a it's a pre-war bus. We think there's one that we found that might be a little older than it, but it's uh, one of the oldest silver sides, one of the old, oldest diesel coaches uh, in the United States, and uh, there are others around. That 3701 that uh, uh, we toured. Uh, just in a couple of videos ago. That one certainly is one of the older ones. It's older than mine. Um, Taylor Burr, who's a friend of ours, a uh, friend of mine up in uh, in St. Paul, he's got a 3701 that's older. But there's only a handful of these. And there is a, a 4101-003, the oldest uh, one, uh, just popped up in Riverside, California, and I think somebody just bought it. So. These are, you know, fairly rare. They they have some of the same parts that the the 47 and 48 silver slides have, but there's a lot of things about these that they don't have. And one of those things is uh, it has an air shifter, so it uses air to shift gears first, second, third, fourth. And I got a call yesterday as the process of putting the springs back together um, that uh, it seems like that was not working right. A lot of these buses need to have, uh, well, special care. You're, you're going to fabricate before you try to locate, I guess, in a lot of these parts. Um, the air shift, I went hunting for one yesterday when I was told that it, it's uh, the, the box is kind of corroded. Um, the air shift is actually not something that uh, anybody I've talked to knows about. The bus boys don't have any idea. They've, they've only got one pre-war bus. Uh, a, you know, yellow coach in their collection right now. We've got a, a couple uh, of later silver sides, but but they only have one that's on that transmission. The uh, uh, Gene down in uh, North Carolina, who's got a bunch of silver sides, those are all post-war silver sides as well. So it's a very rare part, and it's one that we're going to probably have to have some fabrication done to get it rebuilt. And that's just how it goes with an older bus. You you know you got to kind of figure it out. So hopefully it won't give us trouble on the way home. Uh, there were a couple of other things that were going on with this bus. Uh, I ripped the flange out of the drive shaft or the drive shaft U bolt uh, um, got ripped out of the flange, and uh, so that had to get replaced. The flange finding a flange was not easy to find. Um, and uh, you know, there's some other stuff. The brakes, uh, I, you know, I've got new brake shoes. They they didn't get replaced. Um, they just didn't have time to get them done. Um, so that's something that I'll have to do up here. And uh, you know, there's there's other things. Mechanically, uh, this bus is actually a little bit more stable, reliable than that Texas bus that I have, the the uh, 1947. Um, and it just. It, 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 we replaced so much on this bus and we spent so much time working on the engine and the mechanicals. Uh, the electrical is, you know, not great. We have to rebuild it. I have a new dashboard that I bought for it. So there's all kinds of things that this one needs. And uh, so I'm really excited. Um, you know, I, I, I probably not going to keep both buses. Um, and uh, I don't know. This one, for whatever reason, it just suits me well. I like it and uh, I like driving it and uh, so I'm excited to get back in the seat and, and bring it home to Traverse City uh, from uh, Indianapolis and hopefully we won't have some of the problems that we had with our Texas bus. Um, and I hope not. The radiator is in better shape. We have a new fan in it. Um, all the hoses have been replaced. Um, the radiator didn't look bad. It didn't, you know, it didn't have all that uh, corrosion going on like the Texas bus had. So um, Tyler said he's been driving it around, and uh, hopefully, uh, you know, it, it's 
not going to break today and it's going to perform well and we'll get her home and uh, park next to the other one. They've never met. <laughs> so I'm on my way down and uh, we'll uh, look forward to seeing Tyler. So one of the things that uh, is driving me crazy since I've owned these buses is something that uh, uh, that it's missing. Seatbelts. So neither bus has a seatbelt in it, and they, they don't think they ever did. There's no holes or anything for them. And it's one of those things that I, I can't feel comfortable driving without a seatbelt. And so um, I went to go look for seatbelts, and it took me two and a half months to get them in. And it, I'm not ordering super fancy seatbelts. Um, it's just supply chain seems to be a little, uh, little different. And there are all kinds of different styles out there and things like that um, of seat belts. Let me see if I can reach it, but I, I can't get the other one. But it's, uh, so I went with a uh, retractable uh, three point. So you see how this snaps back? Um, my seat belt actually has the retractable portion that will mount right here instead of in the panel, in the channel. And so it'll come in here, it'll go down to click into this, and then it'll go down to the uh, uh, left side of me. And so uh, I hope to get that installed uh, tonight before we take off, because I just don't want to drive 400 miles in the bus without having a seatbelt. Uh, we drove all the way back from Texas in the other bus with uh, without one, and it drove me crazy, and I've put one in that bus. And so that's something that uh, I want to get taken care of right away. Um, I'm pretty excited, uh, like I mentioned before, to, to ride this, drive this bus. I really like it. It only has a two-valve head, so it's not as powerful. Um, but it's just got this, like, spunk about it. I don't know. I just, I like it. It's, it's, uh, uh, brakes are really crisp. Everything is, is pretty good on it, so I'm kind of excited. Certainly, there's rust that have built up over the last year while it's sitting there that will have to uh, kind of get cleaned up. And I've got a good place up where I live that can do all the brake work for me. Um, so that's good, but uh, so we'll see. But I, that's the only modification that we're gonna get taken care of uh, while we're there. Um, headlights and taillights brakes work, um, and so we're good with that. Um, Tyler's gonna follow me up, and that's uh, something that's kind of an important aspect is uh, until I get some miles under it, the idea of breaking down the side of the road, which is going to happen, because <laughs> uh, it's happened to every bus owner I've, I've ever talked to, um, you know, I, I just, uh, I, I want to drive it around locally, and if it breaks down, you know, I can get to my tools and stuff, um, and eventually I'll, of course, carry my own tools as I travel around. This bus is actually pretty good shape as far as the interior, and I've been thinking a lot about what do I do? It's got a table, it's got a couch, it's got some hideous carpeting, um, and I think I'm gonna just leave this one pretty alone. I'm gonna redo the upholstery, and I'm going to, uh, 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 you know, redo the kitchen, put new cap, uh, new uh, uh, countertop and, you know, stovetop and that kind of stuff in it. Uh, but I think I'm going to leave this one fairly simple as it is. I have to build out the bedroom. The bathroom's in, in okay shape. I've got to just get it cleaned up, but I've got to get everything functional, put new spigots on, you know, new new sink basin, that kind of stuff. But I, I'm not going to go crazy on, on the 4101 um, because it's pretty good shape. Um, I will have to change the wall panels, and I've already worked on that. I'm going to redo the floor, which is fine. So, it, you know, there's going to be some things to be done, but it's not going to be a wholesale rip it out. The Texas bus is a little different. The Texas bus, as I mentioned in one of the other uh, uh, videos that I have, um, it was, really was not done very well. It was a bunch of guys who wanted to take the bus to go to NASCAR races. So they really didn't, uh, they didn't go all out. It's just two by fours and cheap cabinets and stuff like that. That one, the more I look at it, uh, the more I just want to you know, gut it and, and start from scratch. And so uh, we'll see kind of how it goes. And the other thing is, which do I prioritize? And that's the other issue. I've got two different buses. I, I'm gonna spend time this winter, I wanna get one where it's really complete. And I think it's probably gonna end up being the 4101, because I don't have to put a lot of interior into it. Um, there is some exterior work. I'm gonna have to find somebody who can work with metal 
I need to put a new door on. I've got the door. I've got all the parts to fix it up. That broken trim across the nose, um, that's something that uh, I was able to find a replacement part. So I have to find somebody who can do metal work to do all that kind of stuff to make it look pretty, but it, it's certainly functional. So, uh, so that's kind of, I'm excited to see what I've got. Then I can really start my planning on uh, the work that I want to get done this winter. Um, so seatbelts and, uh, and we'll hopefully get it on the road. So frost is not something you want to see on the <laughs> beginning of a journey home. This is the first frost day of, uh, of the year, I guess, here in Indianapolis. And I had probably uh, half an inch on my windshield this morning on my rental car. So look, we got frost on the tires, we have frost on the windows. So the big problem with frost is, uh, is right here. <laughs> I have two windows out. Uh, that we use as templates to get the glass made. And we keep putting plastic in, but you know, driving home tonight, the plastic's gonna just blow right out. So, uh, wouldn't be so bad as, as if I didn't have one in the back. So it's a nice wind tunnel that we're creating to uh, freeze. It's gonna keep the carbon dioxide to a low. Yeah, yeah, so at least I don't have uh, problems with carbon monoxide, which we don't have problems with that in this bus. It's, it's a good bus that way. But uh, we, uh, I haven't gotten around to get an ice scraper yet, but let's just take a look. I mean, that's uh, some good frost. So the bus is ready and uh, take a look at that clearance now. I remember seeing uh, some spring videos where you could barely fit your fist in. I've got two fists in the front and uh, I've been told it's really bouncy right now. The back's sitting down pretty well. Um, that looks pretty good. I actually like that. It's just the front's so light that it's pretty high. My cargo door is inside. We just decided to leave it off for the ride home. This cargo door looks like it's been uh, uh, abused a little bit. Uh, it sat a lot better when we uh, drove it here, so it, it got bent at some point. This wing has been a problem and I've got a replacement for this one uh, at home so a lot of the things that are a problem right now we've got materials to fix them but I'm not worried about that right now I'm worried about the first hundred miles today and not freezing to death so I've got my big Carhartt coat and I've got uh, got ways to kind of stay warm but it's not gonna be fun so we're gonna start firing it up and see what happens A little bit of liquid glow club. Stuff's cold. Can't believe I almost forgot this. That this death trap, it's gonna stay with this bus too. It's been with us from the start, man. All right. Be careful, pull the time again.
Chris is working on the seat belt. We found a bracket that went right up the left side of the driver's seat. We're using the bolt from the seat mount. And then there's probably another place where we can attach it along that, that vertical bracket there. And that'll be good enough to get me home. And then I'll figure something else out. see out of my left mirror right now.
great. So we've been driving about an hour and a half. We've already done one brake adjustment. I've got one of the pads. The, the, can, the can doesn't seem like it's releasing. It's delayed and releasing. And that's got me kind of worried that it's going to stick. It doesn't. It just pops open finally, but it's like a second and a half after the, uh, the rest of them. So we're uh, north of Indianapolis. Uh, normally I can come up US 31, but uh, I'm taking a, a series of state highways just because I'm not ready to deal with the interstate or anything like that yet. So we, we got north of the, the uh, interstate on uh, State Road 29 and then cut across. So uh, I've already filled up diesel once. That went pretty well. I love my seatbelt. That's working well. Uh, and it's just a matter of uh, humming along. This thing drives so well. I, I just love the way that this thing drives. I don't know if it's not the air assist and I just really feel it has tight steering. Uh, the engine seems really responsive, you know, the little governor, and I've got that issue with the governor on the other bus, but uh, this is just a just a fun bus to drive, I think. It, it looks like, looks horrible. <laughs> it needs uh, some exterior beautification, uh, but, uh, you know, as, as the uh, drive trains go, I really, really like this bus, and... Uh, you know, want to do the rest of it, the dashboard and the stuff, but it shifts forward and reverse, no problem. The brakes work, although we've been adjusting them because it hasn't driven in a while. The door works, I mean, the stuff you need. I've got a speedometer and a, and a uh, temperature gauge for the heat that works really well. So, I don't know, all in all, I guess I just, uh, I'm, I'm really enjoying driving this bus again. I kind of wish it was a little warmer, but what are you going to do about it? So, onward north. Well, we're uh, in South Bend. We're actually, here, I'll come around here. We, uh, we decided it's time for lunch. It's about noon. We've traveled about 150 miles and uh, 175, and it's performing really well. No uh, problems, some brake adjustments we had to do. We'll probably do one more before we take off here. But, I'll show you right there. Kind of behind that where that uh, truck is parked back there that's where the texas bus broke down <laughs> we decided to go to the same uh, gas station and uh, <clears throat> and fuel up so it's performing really well uh, i was averaging 65 miles an hour on uh, 31 there in that video so i was pretty in disbelief how uh, well she's performing no real issues. The brakes had needed some adjustment, but it's been sitting for a year, so it's rusty. Now we're going to check the oil, and uh, we're going to fire it up and start heading our way back up to Michigan here. Got about 260 miles, so a little bit further than what we've done so far, but we, we stopped. We had to go through tons of little cities, and uh, we don't really have We've got to do that twice, I think, and then we're done. Maybe three more times, so... Hopefully it won't be as uh, arduous as, uh, as what we've had to do through these little cities uh, getting out of Indiana. So here we go. All right. Put her in here. Emergency brake. Important. So we're topped off on oil, we're topped off on fuel, checked our fluids, 
topped off our stomachs, got something to eat, got a healthy sandwich. Now, uh, just a few miles and we're into Michigan. Head southwest on Indiana 23 south. And uh, we're on our way. It's warmer now, so no more need for the big The whole time we were at lunch for maybe 45 minutes, it held the air. When I came in, I left, it was probably uh, 110. US 20 West. US 20 West. And uh, now it's uh, like 95. So it lost 15 pounds in 45 minutes, which that's not bad. I mean, it's not perfect, but uh, no need to warm up. Wait sure for your air to get up to town. Uh, get to town. And those are those new uh, air tanks I put in, or yeah, Chris and Tyler put in. So I was averaging, and I gotta get into traffic here. Uh, averaging 65 miles an hour on the drive between uh, like Logansport and South Bend but I went through a lot of cities so my gas my fuel mileage was like 7.6 miles to the gallon which is horrible this thing usually gets about nine and a half to ten so the next stretch that we're doing we're not going to be doing a lot of starting and stopping it's just going to be highway miles right at, at uh, 65, which is about the top of the governor, and we'll see how the fuel economy changes. One of the things that we notice that's really driving me crazy is regular truck stop gas uh, gas pumps, the reefer pump, which is regular, you know, what a truck would use. It moves the fuel too fast for the filling nozzle. So I just think that in the future, I'm gonna have to just go to the regular uh, car truck gas area and just use the regular diesel pump uh, just because I'm blasting diesel fuel all over the place every time I fill it up and I just don't like that <laughs> so here we go bumping along here we are uh, about three miles from the state line doing 62 miles an hour right now avoid the heavy traffic in this kind of the South Bend urban traffic right now. So I'm passing through. So uh, here we go. Michigan's roads are bumpy. I, I have no idea what they're talking about. This road's fine.
So uh, we're in Holland, Michigan right now, and uh, I came up to an intersection and had a really soft stop with my brakes. And fortunately it was okay, there wasn't anybody in front of me, but uh, we pulled it off and we're getting to it. We adjusted all of the slack adjusters, which is what you do. I mean, as you are driving along, you do a brake adjustment. Um, but now we can't get the brakes to disengage. One of them at least is, is locked up so that when you start it, it feels like the parking brake. And of course, the first thing we did was check the parking brake is, is open and functioning normally. But one of the brakes just is not releasing. And uh, slack adjusters are all backed off and something's stuck on and we can't figure out why. Um, and so Tyler, unfortunately, he's, he's under the bus kind of trying to figure out different things. I'm sitting in the driver's seat hitting the stop, the brake pedal, and um, hopefully we'll get this figured out. But um, this is why, you know, I bought those new brake shoes and, and cans and I wanted to get them done uh, while the bus was, uh, you know, at Carter's when we had everything opened up and it didn't get done and so now we're probably 220 miles north of Indy and we're running into brake problems so a little frustrating.